Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, there have been many, many times that I have stood at the gravesite or the final resting place of a brother or sister in Christ with family and friends looking at me with tear filled eyes. And I have read these words. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would, have, would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. And at those times, standing there at the gravesite, surrounded by tombstones, it seems like death has the last word. And Jesus says, not so fast. Jesus says, no, I have the last word. And the last word is resurrection. And those who have the confession of Martha, Martha who said, you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who came into the world. Those who have that confession, believing Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior, are with the Lord waiting for their bodily resurrection, waiting for that day of resurrection, waiting for that day when Christ will come again in all of his glory and all the dead will be raised to life. And as we recognize and commemorate this Reformation Sunday, we hold true to the truth that we are saved by grace alone through faith alone. Not by anything that we do, but by what we believe and trust in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And that we live each and every day in resurrection, hope, in the knowledge of the truth that Christ has defeated sin, death, and the power of the devil once and for all. And that we have life in his name just as that very familiar passage says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but has eternal life. But we're not standing at a gravesite right now. But these words, I am the resurrection and the life, They have power and meaning and significance in our life every single day, every single moment. Hear again what Martha said. She came to Jesus and she said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. If you'd have come right away when we first sent word to you, if you had not gone away, if you had stayed here, my brother would not have died. Martha was focused on the past. She was focused on the past, and Lord, I wish you had been here. And Jesus said to Martha, your brother will rise again. And she said, I know he will rise again in the last day. Martha believed in the resurrection. She had resurrection hope. And her thoughts were in the future. So her thoughts were in the past, and her thoughts were in the future. And Jesus brings her to the present when he says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Present with her right at that moment. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Very often we think of the resurrection as something in the future, that day of of resurrection. And it is. And the Bible clearly tells about that and speaks a great deal about that. 
the resurrection hope that we look forward to, and we long for that day when Christ will come again. We pray for that. But Jesus says, here and now, He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Resurrection is not just a day in the future. Resurrection is a person. It's Jesus Christ, true God, true man, the one who came down and lived among us. Resurrection is a person, and he gives life. And as God works in our hearts and our lives and brings us to faith in Jesus Christ, Christ is with us. And wherever Christ is, there is life. There is resurrection hope. And as faith is worked in our hearts and as we believe and trust in Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Lord is with us. And yes, we wait for that bodily resurrection But the resurrection of our hearts has already happened. It's already happened. We have eternal life the moment we believe and trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He brings us resurrection, life, and hope each and every day of our lives as He lives in our lives. And that knowledge that Jesus brings present resurrection and life to us changes everything. Changes our attitudes and our thoughts and in the way we deal with and and handle the, the struggles and the challenges of life as we live in this world that is so broken. And we get reminders every day of the brokenness and the evil and the hate and the sinfulness of our world and the effects that sin has on our world and the challenges in our daily life. But in the midst of that, our Lord is the resurrection and life presently and He's with us in the midst of whatever we go through, in the midst of whatever happens, in the midst of whatever takes place. He is the resurrection and the life and He brings life to us. I've mentioned this before I love reading the Psalms, and I know many of you do as well. Because as we read the Psalms, many of the psalmists cry out to the Lord in overwhelming agony and struggle with the things that are, they are going through. How can I continue to, to survive? How can I manage to go through with these things? But the psalmist always comes back to, but you are my rock. You are my salvation. You are my fortress. You are my stronghold. You are my hope. And I put my trust in you. The fact that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life gives us hope and confidence and trust as we live out life walking with the Lord. The passage that was just read from John's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 1 through 44, there is so much in there and could preach a a whole series of sermons just on this chapter. But I want to point out two more things that stand out. And that is at the beginning of the story, When Jesus first gets the message that Lazarus is sick, as he gets the call from Mary and Martha, please come. You need to know this. You need to come. Listen to verses 5 and 6. Jesus loved Martha and her sister Mary and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was Two more days. What? He stayed where he was. Two more days. He didn't rush to go to them. He didn't just 
say the word and Lazarus was healed. He did that with other miracles. There were people who came to him and he said, don't worry, it's all been taken care of. Not this time. He allowed Lazarus to die. He allowed it to happen. Now, God doesn't cause evil. God doesn't bring evil. It's the result of sin. But he allowed it to happen. But it's important to recognize what it says. Jesus loved them. And we're going to hear, as I look at the next section, how deeply he loved them. Jesus loved them And yet he still allowed this death to happen. Sometimes there are things that go on in our lives and we pray about them and and the Lord takes care of it. And it's all taken care of and done with. And we praise the Lord, thanking the Lord for this healing, thanking the Lord for what what has happened. And there's sometimes when what we're praying for, the Lord doesn't answer that. There's sometimes we, we want things to be taken care of and it doesn't happen. Sometimes the Lord allows brokenness to happen. Sometimes the Lord allows those things to happen and we don't fully understand the whys. But one thing we know for sure, especially from this passage, it has absolutely nothing to do whether God loves us or not. It doesn't. He deeply loved Mary and Martha and Lazarus. He loved them. He deeply loves us. And in the middle of whatever we're going through, in the middle of the things that the Lord allows us to go through, He's with us, the resurrection and the life. Just as Mary and Martha went through this grief, Jesus was with them. He is the resurrection and the life. Jesus went out to the tomb. Where have you laid him? And so they took Jesus out to the tomb. And while they were there, hear what happened. When Jesus saw Mary weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, He was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. Jesus goes out to the tomb and he knows what he's going to do. He knows that in just a few minutes, he's going to speak the words, Lazarus, come forth, and Lazarus is going to come out of the tomb alive. Jesus knows that's what's going to happen. And yet, as he goes out there to the tomb, and as he stands there, and as he witnesses what's happening, the text tells us he is deeply moved as he watches the grief of Mary and the others who are all gathered there, friends of Lazarus, as he watches their grief, he is deeply moved and he weeps. The Greek words that are used here is that uncontrollable grieving and weeping. If you were to stand behind Jesus at that moment, you would see him shaking as he would be trying to hold back the tears. That's what the Greek words mean there. As he's grieving the grief that Mary and others are experiencing, as he's grieving the death of his friend. Our God does not have the attitude of of saying to us, you know, I got it all taken care of. It's all going to work out good in the end. And we have a God who is incredibly compassionate. 
and a God who knows what grief is all about because he came down and became one of us and lived among us and he experienced it. And he knows the pain and the agony of grief. He experienced it. And in the midst of the the pain and the agony of grief, in the midst of the struggles, again, the message is He is the resurrection and the life. He is the one who brings life and hope in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our suffering. And He was there that day with Mary and Martha and all the rest who were gathered there. And He's with us also, as He brings resurrection hope into our lives, as our hearts have already been resurrected, and as we look forward to the ultimate day of resurrection when all will be made new again, no more sin, no more struggles, no more difficulty, but being in the perfect presence of our God for all eternity. We long for that. This was the last of the miracles Jesus did until the greatest miracle of all. The miracle of his own resurrection. The miracle of the credible love of our God who died on the cross for us, rose victoriously from the dead on that first resurrection, on that first Easter morn. And because of that, Our Lord Jesus Christ has the last word. He has the last word in our past. He has the last word in our future. And He has the last word in our present. And that is, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.